Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Camille from Camille Fine Art. How are you today? Well, it's day 11 of our kids, adult kids art journaling on our downtime, making it fun time. And it's just nine o'clock now. So we'll wait a moment or two and see if um, people are joining. Oh, they're just starting to join right now. Hello. All right. We'll go, let's go ahead and get started. So it's, as I said, it's day 11 of our, our adults and kids are journaling uh, with Camille Fine Art. And I am, oops, lost the connection. I hope everybody's there. Um, and I am going to do a, a review of yesterday quickly. And I am going to uh, go through our exercises for today. Hope everyone's doing well on this Tuesday. So yesterday for the kids, you know, or adults, this, these exercises are for anyone who wants to do them. Um, we were doing the letter J. And for the letter J, we were creating a jet plane and then writing all the places that we want to go if we were able to fly this jet anywhere in the world. So I have a lot of places, obviously, I want to go. Some are, some are national, some are international. And so this is what I did for the letter J. And I posted all these examples in the comments under uh, the day 10 post. So the next thing is we were doing the number 10. And I had asked uh, the kids to draw a jar, uh, draw the number 10 in the center, draw a jar, and then put 10 jelly beans inside the jar. And then each one should be colored a different color. And then write the numbers for each jelly bean in, inside the jelly bean. And then tell us which one is your favorite. So here's my, here's my uh, jelly bean jar. And I've got 10 jelly beans in there. And I have two favorites. My favorite favorite is red. And then my other favorite is purple or grape flavored. So those who like jelly bellies know that they taste mm, really good. And then for the adults, the adults, I had you do an exercise where you were writing your alphabet and your numbers, both printed and then in cursive uh, with your dominant hand and then switch over to your not in dominant hand. So this is what I did. And, you know, I have to say I'm a little bit out of practice uh, because I still was a little shaky on my left hand. These are all my left hand ones here. And um, I do need a little bit of practice, but they're not too bad. But that's because I practice. And it's really great to get that brain. I mean, I even I, because I haven't done it in a while, I had to really like turn my book a certain way because I had to do it left-handed and I'm a right-hander. And when I, when I was writing, I was like, I really, it was, I was almost like struggling a little bit because I haven't done it in so long. Hi, Gloria. Thanks for joining. And um, so it was really a good, excuse me, a good physical exercise for my hand. It was a good uh, exercise for my brain, but it was also a good mental exercise because, oh, I started getting a little bit frustrated um, when I was trying to write. So practice this. I'm telling you, I know it seems rudimentary, but practice it. All right. So today for the kids, we're on number 11. And number 11 um, is is like a magical number too. It's it, they call it a master number, um, and it and it means really good. You know whatever, because number one is a very powerful number in itself. And then when you make it an eleven, it it also ups that power. So um, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna draw a face. So I'm gonna ask you to make the number 11, and I love this because I can make it any which way and it still looks the same when I turn it on camera. So make your number 11, and you can turn your book e either any way you want to make the face, but use the number 11 to make a, a, a nice, powerful looking face. 
Um, you can use any colors you want. It can be some. It can be a reminder of someone you know, or it can just be an imaginary face that you make up all on your own. So this is really free form today. Now for alphabet, we're doing the letter K. So we're gonna do a capital K. And all you kids out there who know the alphabet, um, you know that there's lots of words that begin with K, but we're going to draw a kite today. And you don't have to draw it out of here. You can just draw it around. Just leave the K in the middle so you know what, we're, what letter we're working on. But draw a big, beautiful kite. You can have any design on it that you want. The only question or the only um, parameter I have is draw 11 bows on the tail to match up with our 11. So we want 11 bows. You can make them the same color. You can make them different colors. Um, but, you know, then those kids who can write, write the word kite and write the word tail on your paper. For those who can write sentences, write a story about your kite. Talk about how high it was able to fly, where you went to fly it. Maybe talk about the design you chose. Why did you choose the design? And let, tell us a little story about your kite. All right. Now for adults, we have another little exercise for you today. So you're, you can take a pencil, a pen, a marker. It doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong on this. But what you're going to do, and I'm going to just do a little example here. I want you to draw a, a scene, and it can be anything you want. The only thing, the only parameter I have is that you never lift the pencil, pen, or marker. So you're always drawing with a continuous line. So if I wanted to draw a flower, let's say, I'm never lifting my pencil. I'm drawing backwards, so I'm sorry if it doesn't look that good. But say I wanted to draw a whole bouquet of flowers. I couldn't lift my pencil or my pen. I'm going on, and I'm going to just keep going. I'm never lifting my pencil. It's an exercise, and I'm doing it all upside down. Sorry, I lifted it up, but you get the drift. You can draw a whole building scene like this. I've done, I've done this exercise where I've done whole cityscapes, never lifting my pencil. I've also drawn whole landscapes, never lifting my pencil. So this is a really good exercise for you because, again, we're challenging the brain. And it doesn't have to be a masterpiece. You do not have to be an artist to do this, okay? Um, what you just want to get your brain thinking about how, you know, you're challenging yourself. How can you draw what you want to draw? And you can don't have to stick to one page. I mean, you know, if you wanted to go across to your other page and draw a big, nice scene, you could do that. If you want to do multiple, you don't have to do just one because maybe this one's a good challenge for you and you can try different things. Maybe you do a floral scene and a building scene and a purse. You can draw people like this. So it's really uh, an interesting um, little, I, I won't say trick, but it's a, a good exercise to train your brain to really think. Because you kind of have to think ahead. Okay, where am I going to go now? Where can I take this? And it's going to look good or look decent. Or, you know, or I can work it in somehow where I never have to lift this pencil pen or marker. So that is my, my list of exercises. Um, today is Tuesday. I want to give you a heads up for uh, Fun Friday. So for Fun Friday, um, we're going to be working again in the, in the book. But if you have glue or a glue stick um, and some different papers and cardboards um, that you 
have laying around the house because I, I keep mentioning, you know, let's reuse what we have so we're not making a whole lot of garbage because people are home. If everyone's home, we tend to make a little more garbage. So what can we do to upcycle or recycle some of these pieces that we've thrown that we normally would throw away in the garbage? So if you have things like lids to containers, like circles and stuff that you can use for stencils, save some of those. Um, if you have old little cardboard boxes and stuff, uh, excuse me. Um, if you have little cardboard boxes or pieces of cardboard that you can tear into different shapes so that we can glue them in to, for our exercises coming up. Um, what I would like to do on Fridays is incorporate some of these things that you have around the house. Um, you know, and if you don't have glue, if you have tape or something, we can do that. You know, some of you are creative people and you have stuff around and others you don't. Um, I, I want to make this as user friendly as possible because I don't want you to have to go out and buy anything. I want you to, to be able to use what there is around the house. And if, if for some reason you cannot do the exercise as I'm showing it, I'm always going to show just uh, a, a drawing exercise too, or a coloring exercise. So that way we always have something going on in our journal. Last thing before I go. Um, I would like for you to, to do some journal writing on your own. Just start getting in the habit of, you know, even if it's a little blurb, two or three sentences, doesn't matter. Make sure you date your journal. Every time you put an entry, every time you put a drawing in, you know, make sure you're putting the dates on these drawings. Um, I guarantee you, you may not think it's important now, but I guarantee you when you get to the end of this book, to the end of our, you know, stay at home situation, you're going to look back and you'll say, it, wow. I really did a lot over that time. And you know what? How Then you take um, an assessment of how you're feeling. And, you know, same for your kids. You're going to notice the types of drawings that are coming through. And their feelings will show up in their drawings for sure. Even if they're not saying it, they find another way, either um, physically, uh, through their actions, or through their drawings. So this is really good to keep um, a look out at your kids. Look at your kids' journals and see what they're what they're doing. You know, ask them about it. To, you know, have them to tell you a little story. I know we're having them writing them, but have them tell you the stories of the pages that they're writing because they love. There's nothing they love more. You know, when they come home from school, mommy, mommy, daddy, daddy, look what I wrote. Look what I drew. You know, this is like the best time ever to really bond with with your young ones over this. And I've been giving my, you know, my granddaughter little exercises too. Uh, she's got homework. She's doing e-learning for school. But, you know, she's practicing her art. She loves art, so she is practicing. So... Anyway, that's it. It's 9.13. I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. Thank you so much for joining. Please do share these posts with your family and friends and colleagues uh, so that we can, uh, you know, give everybody some extra little things to do to keep themselves busy. And, you know, post your pictures. If you, for some reason, cannot post on this page, um, please instant message me or direct message me on Facebook because uh, I would love to see, you know, just take a snapshot with your phone and attach it in the comments. That's all you have to do. All right. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you same time tomorrow, 9 a.m. Central Time right here on my Facebook page, Camille Fine Art. Thanks so much. Have an art inspired day.